Hey guys, Omnibus Tutorials here with my another video. And today we're going to be talking about Excel best practices. But before I really like just quotes and I, I think I'll start, you know, every video that uh I think of a quote that can be relevant to the video or something that I've quite ever first stumbled across recently that I think other might be, other people might like. I'm just going to share it with y'all. So today's quote is, if all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So for Excel best practices, this first one is really my pet peeve. Uh, never use merge cells. I, I really dislike getting other people's spreadsheets and there's merge cells everywhere. Uh, the reason people do it is I think they think it looks better, which might be true, but they don't realize there's alternatives. So I'll be making a video about center across selection which is the way to get around a merge cell and people kind of ask me and I tell them not to they ask why and it really messes with the way Excel can read it as a table and the reason that matters is because you really use a table for pretty much everything that's how you store data properly um, that's how pivot tables are read really effective and efficient sum ifs, sorting, filtering, all that jazz with basically all the main things you would do in Excel are required not using merge cells. I also mess with Excel's autofill feature which is one of the best features in Excel. And it can also mess with copying and pasting formats. It can, if, if it's merging three cells and you paste it, it will also merge three cells and it's, it really is not nice. The second one is to use an intro sheet and talk about where that you get the data from, what databases, what tables you're pulling it from, what equations you used, and any other assumptions. If you assume that you're going to sell X amount of product in each quarter, that's a good place to state that. It really makes for uh, reminding yourself. If you, if you come back a month later, you might not remember, but it also makes it really good if you're showing it to a coworker, a manager, a client. It makes it really easy to understand, and they don't have to come back to you and uh, blow up your inbox asking you questions about it. They have all the answers right there that they need. There was pasting values and storing numbers as numbers. So, really, uh, there's a couple different things that gotchas in Excel. One of them is numbers can look like other stuff. So it can look like it's a number, but it's actually not. And we'll go over that in another video. And then. You, you really want to paste values as, as values. You don't want to. Uh, once you get into other stuff, it can really. If you try to paste equations and you're not using um, the right cell references, that can get a little tricky and make your spreadsheets not not nice and convoluted. So number four is make sure you're using absolute and relative cell references correctly. This is a huge one. It really is. It can save a lot of time, and it can also mess up your data if you're not using it correctly. So it saves time and it's very accurate. So number five is helper columns to help you yourself understand the data. And bigger is not always better. It it helps to break it out and really show your thought process of how how you got to the conclusions you got to. And so especially if you're showing your spreadsheet to a client or a manager, they might not be impressed with how big and uh, bulky your equations are. They're more just looking for the information. So being able to step through and show them how you got to those results it is really important and is really the, the end goal of m most analysts and spreadsheet users. So number six is today's quote, which is, if all you have is a na hammer, every problem looks like a nail. So I really want to challenge you to learn as much as possible. While you can get something done with one equation, see if it's the best way that it it is to get the job done. So I think Abraham Lincoln is quoted as saying, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening my axe. And and that's really, I think, goes a long way. Is that's how I learned a lot of Excel and really learned to love Excel was uh, thinking there'd be a more efficient way to do something and really challenging myself to learn it. 
And that's how I grew to love it. It was like I realized how much functionality Excel really had. And number seven, don't be afraid to look for online help, help from coworkers, or you can message me with any questions. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you subscribe. Thank you. Bye.